G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Christie David, and each week I'm proud to bring in someone to the show who what I call is best in breed. So someone who lives, eats, sleeps, breathes, all things property. And uh, and we get to come in, pick their brain and run through you know, quite a few questions that clients will ask me in my role as the founder and mortgage broker at Atelier Wealth. Today's guest is a wonderful friend of have known for quite some time and, uh, and, and a consummate professional. Welcome to the studio, Cassandra Richards. Thank you very much for having me. Right. Wonderful to have you here as well. Now, I am, uh, and you run a business called Tweak Property, which we'll, we'll talk about what you do in a minute, but uh, you've got a, I mean, a wonderful, I've you know, seen your website, I've seen your work, and you've got a, a wonderful flair for, for the artistic detail and, and styling in your, in your role as uh, interior design and property styling. So we're going to have a chat to you about you know, how, that, how, that's, how your business has evolved, how you've changed, and, and how you've been able to help homeowners and property investors alike as well, yeah? Yeah. But before we do, let's kind of what I call the three Ps, which is a bit about yourself personally, okay. a bit about yourself professionally, and a bit about yourself on a property front as well. Well, um, so personally, I'm a mum of three small boys. Yeah, that will keep you. That, that's almost a full time job right there. Yeah. Not almost. It is. Yeah. I, I, it's funny because being a mum, you you are super busy, but at the same time, I think there's this ability to multitask that you never had before you had children. Yes. So it can be well, you helpful actually think, too. What do I do with all that spare time before kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I feel like I've wasted half my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so mum of three boys, just recently remarried. Congratulations. I live on the central coast, which I love. Yes. Um, we're on the lake there. And Wonderful. yeah, it's it's like a holiday every day up there. It's lovely. It? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then what was the next one? What's the next and P? And about your, so your business journey. So I've had the business, it'd be going on 13 years now. Wow. I started off with a business partner and I'm now by myself. Yep. I have been for probably about half of that. Fantastic. Um, I'm a trained interior designer and draftswoman. Yeah. Uh, but we went into to the pre-sale preparation and property styling when I saw that we were doing a lot of work for developers um, and I saw how people could be adding value to their property and I wanted to do this for families. So our whole thing is that we're adding value to your own home before you sell it and it's so that you can step into your future with joy because a lot of people are either downsizing and then they can take that into their retirement or they're upsizing because they've got a growing family and we know where that money goes. Yes. (laughs) So um, it's it really is my why and when I found it, it just sort of even injected me more into loving what I do for sure. That does, it kind of gives that momentum when you go, I know who I serve, I know how to serve them best and I know where our sweet spot is. It's kind of that that perfect, I guess that uh, wind underneath your wings, isn't it? Yeah, Yeah, definitely. It's, you know, I love what I do because I enjoy the creative side of it. But when you see the uh, outcome you get for families, that's my real kick. Mm. That's what I really love. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Great to have you on. Great to have you on. And I mentioned you you mentioned there about the pre-sale. So let's kind of Mm. start with everyone. Work our way through your business, your proposition, but most importantly, what that means for for property investors and homeowners alike. So take us through what the pre-sale consultation involves and how you kind of had that conversation with someone. So our whole process is what I call the three P's. So you've got three P's and yep. so do I. There we go. Yours, <laughs> yours are trademark though, mine aren't. Um, so a pre-sale consultation, yep. property preparation, and then property styling. Okay. So our pre-sale consultations is when we go through someone's home or investment property, it may have been, and we tell them how to get 10 to 20% more on the sales price. Yeah, right. And so it might be changing over tapware, a coat of paint, cleaning, or even new carpet, that sort of thing. We then turn that into what I call a property report design brief. Uh, Everything's listed as well as anything that we've suggested we select for them. So if we're saying, okay, you need to paint, we'll pick the paint colour for them. If they need to change tap where there's a picture, a code, where to get it from and how many you're going to need. So then they can take that report get as many trade quotes as they want or have us do it for them yep. or they can do it themselves if they're on a tight budget. Okay. And to me, that is the most value for money for sure. Then what we do is the preparation. So it's actually putting that work, work into play yeah. and then the property styling at the end. And so the average style property, there was a um, – a study done in America, seven to twelve percent more, just styling it. Yeah, right. Um, and then we find that other gap in the preparation. Okay. 
the preparation being maybe it's the painting or that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cosmetic work, but then the styling is the icing on the on the cake. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Definitely. So take me through. I mean, I'd love to go through a couple of examples with you. And I've seen, I mean, you're preaching to the converted here because, you know, when we've, <laughs> when we've sold in the past, it's been styled and staged and going through homes and you can go, this is definitely, you know, it's been staged, but you go, there's something aspirational about this and it has, it has a very homely feel about it. And that's when you often, that you command that premium when you are selling to the emotional buyer, the owner occupier, the upgrader or downsizer, for example, that go, I can see myself living here because there's that emotional attachment, which is naturally your gift to then create that, right? So take me through, give us the magic sauce and how do you (laughs) you then do it? Yeah, definitely. Look, I think um, for us, because there's two kinds of buyers. There's that emotionally driven buyer and then there's the one that just cares about the numbers and then the strategic buyer. And I guess where our service is a little bit different because there are lots of stylists out there and that only really appeals to the emotional buyer. Where we do that pre-sale consultation, we're basically getting rid of any boxes that could be ticked where it might bring the price down. So for older homes, for example, we just did a really beautiful old um, 1880 townhouse in Newcastle. And so for something like that, I recommend a building report before you even start because you can make something look pretty, but at the end of the day, if there's something structurally wrong with it that's going to cost a buyer maybe $10,000 to fix, they're likely to knock $50,000 off the price. Yeah, nice. One. So it gets rid of that uh, any of those problems that may come up later in the in the sales process, which might then lengthen out your sales time, which then people are starting to go, "What's wrong with the property?" Mm. So, um, def- and that's the first question people ask. Like when properties are sitting on the market for a little bit longer, they're not worried about the campaign; they're worried about the property in and itself, isn't it? That's yeah. right. And, it, and I mean, someone else might mess it up, but yeah. at the end of the day, if that's your property, I would want to be getting rid of anything that might stop a buyer or make them bring the price down. Yes, but on. So that's really where you take care of that strategic buyer. So he can't go through, and it, and it does tend to be, I don't mean to sound sexist, but no. it does tend to be the women that are emotionally attached and the men that are going, hang on, does this work monetary-wise? Oh, it's, it's yin and yang energy and, yeah, it's yeah. not being sexist at all. It's, uh, it's, I feel it's like how wide a little bit, like women will come into the house. It's like I can see myself being here. Personally speaking, we went through the house. My wife loved the jacaranda tree and that's what <laughs> sold her on it. Um, so whoever planted the tree in the house you know, 50 years ago has definitely spoken to her. But um, You're there probably going, I'm those roots the are affecting the plumbing. Oh, this is it, right? I'm like, <laughs> wait for this. To, and then like, yeah, there's no grass that grows under the tree. So I'm thinking logistics and and day to day and then Bernadette's kind of well I can see us having a fair being a family here the kids growing older and 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 I can imagine styling will play to that because we go to some houses and it's got the nursery already set up and it's like definitely yeah we can see our baby being born here and our kids growing up here and 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 the story then resonates with the family that sold it their kids grew up there and they're passing the baton on to that next family as well so it's staging and, and styling can lead to a story being told as well, can't it? Definitely. And and that's what it's about. We find with smaller homes, it's about trying to show how you can fit everything. Mm. And for larger homes, it's about how you're going to use the space. Yeah, nice. So it can work on any scale. You know, you might have a smaller sort of old three bedder. We had one out at Cambridge Park um, and it was the traditional L-shaped three bedroom, yeah. weatherboard home. We spent $20,000 giving it a fresh coat of paint on the outside, a white picket front fence around the front, Beautiful. awning over the back deck to extend the living space because it was so small inside. Yeah. So that was $20,000, two weeks, and we got an extra 70000 for it. Go. So insane. there you go. There's your return on investment right there. Yeah. Now, if you went and talked about stocks with anyone else, no one could give you that figure for two weeks' work. So, yeah. and if this is your home as well, people forget this is tax-free money. Oh, isn't it? Isn't it? So, it's so important. I'm really passionate about that. I mean, I work with a lot of developers as well, working on their plans of how to get extra value out of the home before it's even built. Yeah, nice. But when you're talking families, tax-free money, mm. I mean, that's it, someone's yearly wage for some people. Isn't it? And the other part that often gets overlooked, I mean, we see virtual or digital styling. Mm. I was like kill me now like yeah. what and, and 
and I, I'm not taking a pot shot at the real estate agent, but I'm like, you pitched for the listing to try and get the maximum price and we've now decided on virtual styling? Yeah. How has this happened? It's clearly, it screams to the buyer, this is a budget. Definitely. This is a And excuse the term, but it's lipstick on a pig. Oh, isn't it just? I mean, you can't <laughs> polish a turd, but they, yeah. They look at it online and they go, oh, this looks fabulous. And yeah. then they turn up and they're instantly disappointed. Isn't it? So they're walking in with a dollar value in their head that's sliced right down the yeah. minute they see the, the home as it is. And you lose that emotional connection immediately yeah. the minute they walk through the door. Yeah, I just cannot understand. No. And I mean, and you talk about emotional and walking through the house. The other one is uh, photography. Mm. Yeah, I, I'd call it a bit like online profiles, right? That photo doesn't match you in real life. And so the amount of times, yeah, the photos have been touched up or whatever it is over, overly, um, yeah. uh, I guess, post produced. And it's like, well, hang on, good photography is worth mm. every cent as well, right? You're going you're gonna to sell the asset, go all in and do this properly. Definitely. And the amount of times I've seen our fabulous styling ruined by bad photos, it really Deeper, upsets right? me yeah. to the point where, I mean, we had a property um, up on the coast and it was going multi-million dollar property overlooking the ocean, all that sort of thing. And I looked at the photos and I'm like, no, mm. because a lot of the time as well, especially in the climate we're in, overseas buyers are buying sight unseen too. Mm. So if you've got a property that's been badly photographed, you're going to lose bias. I so agree. it's all so important. And like that's definitely a part of what we talk about is having those, um, you know, people that really know what they're doing, the talent around you, the right agent, the right photographer, the right stylist, all of that sort of thing is so important. And I don't do this job alone, you mm. know, just the same way you don't do your job alone. Totally. It, you're only a piece of the puzzle. Yeah, but all we're all working to the same outcome, that's which right. is – the higher you can sell your property for, the more cash it's going to give you, the more options it gives you afterwards versus the buyer that's going to come in and the haggle because you haven't put your best foot forward. I just, yeah, it's something Definitely. that does, I don't understand it and uh, obviously it still happens out there, but I feel like it's a it's a short-sighted campaign when that happens and I think buyers are seeing through that as well going, you haven't, you're selling me the property, but you haven't sold me on the property. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, no, it's it has to be taken from where to go right yeah. the way through. And uh, that's why I love what we do because we're taking a huge chunk of that out for you. You don't have to deal with trades. Mm. You're dealing with someone that knows. And trades at the moment. Oh, uh, it's a nightmare. I'm sure you. Not uh, for me. Uh, you, you got your <laughs> hot list of trades and they'll, they'll call you back. But quite often for people it's like, I chose them just because they're the only ones that turned up. Yeah. yeah. Or you chose the cheapest and yes. you got what you paid for. Oh, spot on. Yeah, spot definitely. On. But it's also knowing as well, like I've seen people add on carports and things that can't be approved by council and mm. weren't approved by council. Therefore, the bank can't value them. Totally. Therefore, it hurts someone's loan structure when they're trying to borrow and p sales fall through Correct. because they've got something on the property that can't be valued. So it might be an old still at home that they've closed in underneath. It's now four bedrooms, was two, never approved. Sorry, you're going to need um, loan insurance. Yeah, so mortgage insurance yeah, or mortgage the bank insurance. won't even actually lend on that property because it doesn't meet or it's That's unapproved. Right. Yeah, unapproved. And so you have sales fall through or you narrow your market right down to people that have you know, cash, cash. Great. but then either be ready to drop your price so that you can meet the cash they have, or you're probably going to find someone that's looking to knock it down so that they can get it council approved and actually do it properly and then resell it. <laughs> Which from our experience is more common than people realize. People mm. that have made unapproved, um, you know, granny flats are another one. There's, yeah. a, there's a dwelling on there that's not council approved, the carport, um, awnings, car back, uh, what would you call it, pergola sections? Yeah, definitely. Decks that aren't approved. Yeah, and then they're trying to sell it and then the value goes out there going not council approved and the bank's just going, we're not going to lend on it. And, yeah. And then what happens is that property comes back onto the market. Now the agent has to put out these fires as to going, well, there is something wrong on the property, but people may not know that their finance fell through for particular reasons as well. Yeah, that's right. It hurts everyone, mm. in, in particular the person that's selling for yeah, sure. You know, you need to be talking to people that know these things. You know, you can't do a 30 square metre deck unapproved, but you can do a 25 square metre deck yeah, unapproved. Yeah. So it's all those little things that those pre-sale consultations are great for that sort of thing because you don't particularly want to have things approved if you're trying to sell quickly either. Mm. So if you know how to get around it and not have to worry about it, it might be the difference between selling in four weeks to selling in six months. There you go. Yeah. Yep.
For sure. Perfect. You said something wonderful before about you can't uh, put lipstick on a bit, <laughs> right? I love it. Um, which you, you see some properties that, again, um, styled, but maybe styled incorrectly mm. as well. I mean, we've got a beautiful beach style uh, home, but it's not styled correctly or it's overly styled or it doesn't, it's not hitting the mark from who the potential buyers are going to be. So when you're, for, you mentioned before that some people can DIY. So if you're DIYing, for example, what's some of those do's and don'ts that you maybe suggest or recommend as well? Make sure you're embracing the building's original style. So if you're if you've got a beautiful federation home, don't put modern furniture in it and try and pretend it's a modern building. Or if it's a mid-century sort of 60s style home, embrace that because someone who falls in love with that will fall in love with the style inside and out as yeah, well. Yeah. We've got one coming up in Stockton Beach tomorrow, ocean front, but it the way it was built, um, and there was some artists living in there. It's quite quirky and eccentric mm. and eclectic. And if I style that as a beach home internally, they're going to then come to the street frontage and go, "This is purple." Mm. Yes. <laughs> so. Whereas if we're styling that nice and eclectic and very artistic, whoever falls in love with the inside and the photos online is going to love the building as a whole. Yeah. So you want to be really embracing the original style or design of the building and not working against it. Yeah, okay. Um, and then it's lipstick on a beautiful building, not yes. lipstick on a pig. <laughs> Perfect. And I guess there's there's – another part with styling which is what happens inside the home but then what happens outside the home as well because I've, I mean, I've had a chat with um, someone else that does a lot of the work on the outside mm. spaces and getting that ready for a sale as well and what a, what a beautifully manicured garden can then also do to increase the value of your home too so where does your domain kind of stop and end when it comes to I guess what's going on the outside as well sure so we do do um, exterior styling definitely yeah. and I think especially if you've got a smaller home you really want to emphasize those outside spaces um, because it extends the living space so you know adding awnings on if they're under 25 square meters and then putting a lounge and a dining out there if you've only got one lounge and dining inside is ideal yeah and then the the other thing is it can go on to the floor plan the agent can sell it that way um you know you don't want an agent selling i saw one the other day and i it was a two-bedroom house and i thought all you had to do was put a wall up and it instantly becomes three bedroom and you're probably talking about a two thousand dollar wall that could go up and get you an extra thirty thousand dollars but he can only sell what's there yeah he can't otherwise it's just dishonest so you have to really assess your floor plan and then try and emphasize those spaces the way you can with furniture too um the other thing is if you don't have the budget to do the work then the furniture can really help show a potential buyer the way it could be so we've got another home coming up it's got this huge log and bedroom which originally they were going to put a wall up the middle for two bedrooms but they can't so what we're going to do is put twin beds in there with a desk in the middle oh, so nice. you can see how it can be easily divided into two rooms without spending the two thousand dollars on a wall yeah so really um and and it's quick too you know to put a wall up plaster it paint it there's probably a couple of days work in that but if you're in a rush styling's done in a day mm. so it's a really quick way to help people visualize a space um you know, dining areas are really important too. If I've got, if I've got two kids and there's me and my husband, and you've got a two seater dining table in there, I can't visualise my family yeah. sitting around that dining table. You know, three bedrooms should be six six seater dining table, two bedrooms, four seater dining table. So it's all those little things that add to the importance of helping people walk in and go, okay, I can see how this will work for mm-hmm. me. A huge amount of what we're doing since um, COVID happened. And lockdown is we're actually styling the fourth bedroom as a home office. I was just about to ask you about yeah, yeah the, the rise from home and that, I mean the amount of times I see the plus study now on mm. on a listing, I'm like it's starting to command the premium, especially. Definitely. Where you are up the coast, where we are down the coast, for yeah. example. Yeah. Because everyone's getting out of the city because they <laughs> realise they don't have to live in a, a two-bedroom apartment yep. anymore because they don't have to be close to work. Yeah. And, I mean, that's why you've seen the prices rise in those coastal areas in the last two years so dramatically compared yeah. to those blue chip areas yeah. because people are working from home now. And so what we're doing is making sure that we can show them how that can work. Mm. 
Definitely. And so if you've got a room that has a, an exterior access as well, um, it's always really good. Or even um, there was one I was looking at the other day and I showed them how to do a floor plan where the ensuite was a two-way and on the other side was the office. So there's an office if a client comes in, there's a bathroom there. Oh, nice. Um, but it, you're making the house work for you both for work and play. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. yeah and this is smart. I mean, this is where, again, everyone that we bring in, is coming to the table with such experience and expertise that it's like you wouldn't know that you were missing this until you had a chat with someone like yourself going, actually, this is the X fact that we're going to bring to your property when you're going to sell your greatest asset as well. Yeah. Definitely. And I mean, not only are we doing that, we're looking at homes where people are being pushed and they're going, I don't know if I can afford to stay here or they want to downsize, but they love their home. Mm. Um, I did a presentation, a Zoom presentation the other day, and there was a woman from Queensland on it. And she was a widow with twins. And she looked, she was looking to sell her big property and said, you know, I love this place. I really don't want to sell it. And I said, well, send me through the floor plan. And we worked out how she could put up a fire wall and make her uh, her garage and her master bedroom into a granny flat oh, wow. and stay in the other ha- part of the house and she can stay there because she can afford her mortgage by herself now when she rents out the other side. Oh, unreal. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it works in so many different ways, but if, if you can't show people how to visualise the space, they think they can't afford it. Yeah, and it comes naturally to you because every time I find I deal with like you know, uh, interior designers or drafts people, for example, they can see the unseen. Mm. That's your gift. Whereas for me, I'm like, show me it. Like, drop, give me a picture and then I can only visualise it once I've seen it. Whereas you can see the intangible and that's that's the gift that you bring as well, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, where that happens as well is a lot with the developers we work with. They'll yeah. send through plans from an architect and an architect does an amazing job. They're looking at the structure, they're looking at the exterior design of it. Mm. But when it comes to the functionality of a space, they know they know what they're doing a little bit, but that's where we really step in. Yeah. And we did um, one the other day and we added about $150,000 to the value of the property and that's just on paper. Mm. So it really pays to really have a look at what you've got and really show people how to visualise the space, visualise the value of it. Um, There was a property that we did in Earlwood, this was a couple of years ago, and it was a two-bedroom, two-living, and we turned it into a three-bedroom, two-living. And that was by putting two double doors in and styling it. Yeah, wow. Just yeah. showing them how to lay it out and then that way the um, agent could list it like that. Yeah. He would have had to list that as a two-bedroom. Yeah. And, I mean, we know that the price jumps from, say, a two- to a three-bedder or a three- to a four-bedder. Four-bed, two-bath is the ultimate, right? Hugely. So, yeah, trying to get yourself to that space as well. It's small costs but huge upside once you get there as well. I think that's the thing. And when I say to people, you know, we'll add 10 to 20% value, they're like, that's impossible. Mm. And I'm like, no, 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 I'll show you. And they're like, oh, okay, I understand <laughs> now. Yeah, great. Definitely. Excellent. Thank you so much. I mean, you, you gave us your magic sauce there as well, <laughs> but I'm sure there's the X factor when you show up and you go, look, this is my trained eye and this is, you know, like I call it a gift. This is the gift that you bring to the table. Yeah, I hope so. No, nah, I hope so. You know so. <laughs> Cassandra, thank you very much for joining us. I loved having a chat. I know that you've, uh, I know you've got runs on the board. I know you've got a great business as well. So I want to say congrats on your success and uh, onwards and upwards for you as well. Thank you very much. I really uh, enjoyed it. Pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> I hope you found that helpful. If you have, uh, love to hear your comments, uh, give us a rating as well. And if you do want to get in, in touch with Cassandra and her team from Tweak Property, we'll then put her details in the in the bio below as well. That's been another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. Until next time, take care.